Review 2024 Porsche Cayenne S celebrates the V8. As with other automakers, electrification and more stringent emissions regulations steer the fate of the Porsche V8 on a similar course as the analog clock and the cigarette lighter. The thoroughly refreshed 2024 Porsche Cayenne S has them all, but for how long? Using the electric Porsche Taycan for inspiration, the third-generation refresh of Porsche's best-selling model represents its most significant update since it was launched new in 2002 to the consternation of Porsche purists. It was an unquestionable success, and Porsche needs it to stay that way. The overhauled KN will be sold alongside the fourth-generation KN, with a full battery electric version expected for 2026. That's why Porsche revised its powertrains to increase power while reducing emissions, revamped the interior to replace analog gauges with digital interfaces, and upgraded the suspension to offer more variability between comfortable cruising and canyon carving. I tested the 2024 Porsche Cayenne S in Southern California, the brand's number one US market, and walked away relieved that it was still the benchmark for the mid-size performance SUV. Porsche Cayenne Power, need a V8? Half of the four KN models offered in 2024 have V8 engines, specifically the KN S and KN Turbo GT. In an automotive twist, the US gets the special Turbo GT range topper, not Europe. Emissions regulations preclude it from being sold in its home market, as well as India, Japan, and most Asian markets. Sold only in coupe form, the Turbo GT dethrones the Turbo SE Hybrid as the most powerful KN, with a twin-turbo 4.0-liter V8 making 650 horsepower and 626 pound-foot of torque. In Sport Plus mode, it launches the KN from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.1 seconds on its way to an 11.6-second quarter mile. It's also the most expensive KN at $197,950. I didn't test it in and outside of Los Angeles. Instead, I tested the projected volume model, the KNS. It uses a heavily modified 4.0-liter twin-turbo V8 making 468 horsepower and 442 pound-foot which is 34 horsepower and 37 pound-foot more than the old V6 it replaces in KNS models. Porsche said it couldn't improve V6 performance and meet emissions regulations, so it turned to the new V8 that better limits emissions and fuel consumption in high-power situations. The modifications include dual single-scroll turbochargers, the GT gets twin-scroll turbos, different camshaft positioning sensors, higher pressure fuel injectors, and new electrified waste gates. The larger, leaner engine improves performance as well as emissions, we're told, EPA ratings were not certified by press tie. The 2024 KNS also shaves 0.2 second from its 0 to 60 miles per hour time, down to 4.7 seconds or 4.4 seconds with the Sport Chrono package. My tester had Sport Chrono, and at launch the KNS lifted like a rear-wheel drive vehicle and tickled like a sports car. Porsche wouldn't break down what percentage of torque gets sent to the rear axle, instead saying that the RWD bias is adaptive but it's never fully 100% at the rear wheels. Every KN comes with AWD and a carryover 8-speed automatic transmission. In Sport Plus mode, there was the briefest lag that I likely wouldn't have noticed if not for all the electric cars I've driven recently. The 8-speed allowed the engine to run up to peak horsepower at 6,000 RPM, and was so in sync with what I intended, on passing moves uphill or coasting into stocks back into LA, that I didn't care that the KN has never sported Porsche's fantastic PDK dual-clutch transmission. The new V8's neatest trick was how quietly it remained in the background. Even under mild throttle to maintain speed, it emitted only a steady, reassuring thrum. Provoke it from normal to sport mode, or poke it with your toe, however, and the optional sport exhaust burbles and the engine barks like some well-trained narco dog let loose on a border bust. All the drive modes migrate from the console panel to a dial on the steering wheel, replete with a sport response button in the center. Sport response essentially acts as a bypass from selecting drive modes, hit the button and for 20 seconds it'll shift into the lowest gear based on the speed, and the suspension firms up accordingly. 
It's kinda gimmicky but still fun. The best use case for me was in normal mode and wanting to pass a trailer uphill. I hit the button, hit the throttle, and hustled past the slowpoke in seconds. To return to the previous mode, I could have hit the button again or waited out the 20 seconds. I waited. Porsche KN, corner carver. The powertrain was powerful enough to wonder if the Turbo GT was worth nearly $70,000 more than the KNS. The KN's best attribute is how it handles, especially up and down mountain twisties, and the S certainly delivers in that department. The 2024 KNS starts at $97,350, including a $1,650 destination fee, but my tester had many performance options standard on the Turbo GT, including 22-inch RS Spider wheels wrapped in Pirelli P0 tires, an air suspension instead of the stock steel springs, adaptive dampers, re-axle steering, the sport exhaust with titanium pipes, chrome tips are an EU no-no, and an electronically locking rear differential. It also came in the $6,400 coupe body style, bringing the tester to somewhere in the $120,000 range. Like 30% of KN buyers, I prefer the coupe for its more proportionate looks and its better feel behind the wheel. I can't explain why. It's 65 pounds heavier than the SUV and comes standard with a panoramic sunroof, and the outward vision over the shoulder is much worse than the SUV, all of which should work against its favor. It doesn't. New two-valve adaptive dampers enable the KN to further spread out its personality from normal to sport to sport plus. The rebound response remains relatively unchanged, but the compression rates increase so at higher speeds it irons out the road without wrinkling the cabin and at lower speeds there's more of a connection to the road. Combined with the air springs, it constantly adjusts to what the driver puts down and how the road hits back. The air springs lower about 0.7 inch in Sport Plus mode, down from 8.3 inches. It's not enough to offset the high ride height endemic to a crossover SUV, but one of the charms of the KNS is how it's able to move laterally and fore and aft without ever losing its center. A couple times on a downhill run I felt a little forward hop going hard into a turn that made me catch my breath, but that was likely due to bumps in the road. Before I could correct it, the KN seemed to rebalance itself. The new control layout moves the suspension settings into the touchscreen, and the new interface allows for customization of drive modes, chassis response, ride heights, and the sport exhaust system. I mostly let the drive modes on the steering dial handle themselves and relished the steering feel itself. Heavily weighted but Porsche precise, the KNS upholds the bar for how a performance crossover should feel in the hands. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.